It was not more than about a month. In fact, on the 29th day of Safar, in the 12th year, the 11th year after the Hijrah of the Prophet وسلم, from Mecca to Medina, Al Rasul وسلم, had come back before that from a battle. And in that battle, he had eaten some food from Khaybar by a Jewish woman, happened to be, and the food had been poisoned. Al Rasul felt okay after that. However, the pains of this poison was felt later on, about a month in the 11th year of Hijrah in Safa. He went to Al-Baqiya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam because he felt himself weak. So where did he go? He went to Al-Baqiya. Al-Baqiya is the graveyard, the cemetery of the Muslims. I wonder why Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is going to the cemetery. Is it because Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam knows that his time is coming? Or is it that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is informing us to remember death and to know that this is the reality? which everyone shall be brought to, even the most beloved creature to Allah, who is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Al Rasul sallallahu went to Al Baqiyah, and with him was Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu and a few other companions. He made extensive long dua for the people of Al Baqiyah and for the shuhada. And after making the huge long dua, he said, you have beaten us, and we will insha'Allah follow very soon. Inna nubashirukum bil jannah. We give you glad tidings of jannah. And then he said this following word, subhanAllah. Wadattu allaw ra'ayna ikhwanana. I wish the only thing that I will miss is that I didn't get to see my brothers, brothers and sisters yet. Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu was standing there listening to this. And he was confused along with the companions. He said, Ya Rasulullah, awalasna nahnu bi ikhwanik? Are we not your brothers? We're here, we're standing next to you, Ya Rasulullah. What are you saying? Something gone wrong, Ya Rasulullah. And Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu was moved. He was scared. He said, Ya Rasulullah, are you okay? We are your brothers, we're here, we're here. Al Rasul sallam looked at him. And his face was tired. And he was slightly sad. He said, Ya Abu Huraira, Antum Ashabi, you are my companions. Ikhwani Alladina Amanu bi walam yarawni. My beloved brothers and sisters are the ones who believed in me, but never had the chance to see me. Lam yatu They have not come yet. I wish only that I could have seen them. Al Rasul sallam indirectly is farewelling, but at the same time, the most important thing after meeting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is us. Did you realize that? Allah says in the Quran, A'udhu billahi min ash shaytanir rajeem, bismillahir rahmanir rahim. لقد جاءكم رسول من أنفسكم عزيز عليه ما عنتم حريص عليكم بالمؤمنين بالمؤمنين رؤوف رحيم. There has come to you a prophet, a messenger of God. From among yourselves, like you, not better than you, from you. Any better, yes, as a messenger of Allah, but from you, the likes of you. When something, a hardship befalls you, it is so great upon his chest and heart. He cannot bear it. Harisun alaykum. He is so careful that you don't fall into harm. Bilmu'minina ra'ufur rahim. He is so kind and compassionate and merciful towards the believers. This is the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu said, Ya Rasulullah, will you ever be able to see these brethren of yours anyway? Al Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Ah, oh, yes, as if I can see it. 
I will be awaiting for them at the Hawd, at the fountain of Kawthar, on the day of judgment. And I will call them one by one to come and drink from my hand. Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu was confused. He said, Ya Rasulallah, how will you know them when you have never seen them? And he said, Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, do you, let me give you an example of a man who has many horses. Many of them are dark, pitch black in color. And among them there are horses with striped colors, white on their foreheads, white on their nose, on their backs, on their legs, on their tail. Is this person not able to tell the black horses from the ones that are striped very easily? He said, yes, Ya Rasulullah. He said, on the day of judgment it will be so. They will come to me on the day of judgment like this. When everyone else because of their kufr and because of their bad deeds, their bodies and their faces will turn charcoal. These people will come and they have different colors on their bodies. This color is nur. Nur coming out from their faces, coming out from their arms, coming out from their legs. And Abu Huraira asked, where is this nur from, Ya Rasulullah? He said, وَذَٰلِكَ مِنْ أَثَرِ الْوُضُوءِ فَأَسْبِغُ الْوُضُوءَ يَا عِبَادَ اللَّهِ This is the result of the wudu which they used to make. So make your wudu extra good. Make your wudu extra good. Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu said, ever since that day, every time I made wudu, I used to make isbaagh. Isbaagh means instead of reaching just to the elbow, I'd just wipe a little bit more above. I'd enjoy it. Subhanallah, have you ever made wudu? while you've enjoyed every drop that falls. Imagining every drop that falls has a sin on it that is dropping away. Enjoying your wudu like you enjoy ibadah, worship, and not just in performance for salat. Like Bilal radiallahu anhu, when Rasul sallallahu went to Isra' al-Ma'raj, and he came back down and said, Ya Bilal, bima sabaqtana? What did you beat us in? Meaning, how come I heard you walking in front of me in Jannah, your footsteps? He said, Ya Rasulullah, I don't know. But at every salat I make wudu, and every time I lose it, I make it again. And he said, this is what the reason why I heard your footsteps ahead of me in Jannah. Ahead of him doesn't mean that he is better than the Prophet ﷺ, but he heard his footsteps literally in front of him, meaning in a distance away, he heard Bilal radiallahu anhu, and he wondered why Bilal radiallahu anhu has a future in Jannah in such a case.